In this video, you'll learn how you can use the allow to edit recipient action in your DocuSign or workflows. I will cover how you can set up the feature and I will also share with you some important things you want to consider before you start using it. And in case we haven't met before and if you're new to this channel, my name is Sofian Saudi and I'm the founder of Solution Consulting. Since 2019, our agency has helped thousands of businesses with DocuSign training, implementation, support, templates and as well as integrations. So if you're tired of struggling with DocuSign alone, you can use the link in the description of this video to book a consultation with one of our consultants as soon as in the next four hours. And if you're new to DocuSign, I strongly suggest that you download our free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will really help you understand the fundamentals of DocuSign. You can find the links of all the things that I mentioned in this video in the description just down below. Now let's jump inside of our DocuSign accounts to see how to use the allow to edit recipient action. Let's actually start with what the option does. So the allow to edit recipient action is very helpful in workflows where one person creates a draft document and another person needs to review that draft, prove it before it gets sent out to someone. So let's use the example of a paralegal drafting a document that needs to be reviewed by a lawyer before the document gets sent out to the client. We'll pretend that as the paralegal, I've drafted this document and I'm about to upload it inside of DocuSign. Yes, I hear you. I'm not a fan of drafting documents inside of Microsoft Words myself because that would mean that they were created manually, but this is really how lawyers do it. So I'm just acting the way that the legal profession would, just for the purpose of this video. Video, I promise. So now let me just upload this document inside of DocuSign. And as soon as I've done that, DocuSign recognized that this is a templated document that needs approval from the lawyer before it gets sent out. So automatically it's offering me to apply the template to that document because I've already got a dynamic template configured in my template library. This is done automatically using two of my favorite DocuSign features, overlay dynamic templates and template matching. And if you haven't watched any of these videos where I cover these features in great detail, you should definitely check them out after this one. So I'm gonna click on apply. And as you will see in my workflow, I will have two recipients. So the first recipient is the lawyer with an allow to edit recipient action. And then the second recipient is the client who has a needs to sign action. I'm going to add the name and email of the client and then I'll send the document. Before I send the document, I'm going to check that my fields are in the right location. And yes, they are. So I'm ready to hit send. Now let's open the envelope as the lawyer since that's the first recipient. From here, we've got three options to choose from. We can either approve the envelope by clicking on complete and send which will route the envelope to the next recipient in the workflow and remember that's the client or i can decide to read the document and i guess this is what i should be doing first if i click on show document here i can minimize this little pop-up and review the document now if it's too difficult to review the document this way i can just click on download and that's going to give me a pdf version of my document to review directly on my computer and the third option of course is to edit the envelope now let's pretend that this is what we want to do here so if i select edit the envelope i'm taken to the correct view which allows me i'm acting as the lawyer now remember to make changes to the envelope even if I weren't the sender of that envelope. This means that I can edit the recipient as long as they haven't signed. Of course, I can't, for example, remove this particular recipient here, although that's myself. But if there was a previous recipient in the workflow that had already signed, I couldn't do anything about that. That's normal. But I can remove this particular recipient here. I can change the details. I can add another recipient. And But the most important thing that I want to show you in this envelope, in this demo here, is that I can also edit the actual document itself so had I been if, if let's just imagine that I spotted so let's just imagine that I saw an error on the document I've so this was the original document and then I made changes and this is the final uh, document you can see there's an extra paragraph and it says final version on this document so I can go back inside of my envelope and then I can replace the document inside of the envelope and upload my final version instead and so as you can see DocuSign is just replacing the document here and it now says final version and this is my new document version I'm just going to check that my fields are still in the right spot 
and yes. And the reason, by the way, my fields are in the right spot, although the signature placeholders have moved from the document is because I'm using autoplace. Autoplace is a feature that makes your field position themselves exactly where they should be. And if you haven't watched my autoplace video, make sure you watch this at some point because it really is such a great time saver if you, the documents you're collecting signatures on are dynamic and you're always having to drag and drop the signature fields in manually each time. So now that I've corrected my envelope with my new document, I'm going to click on correct and then the envelope will be sent to the client who will be able to complete the signing process as usual. But before you go ahead and start using the allow to edit feature, there are some things that you want to consider. The first thing to consider is that this feature is only available on DocuSign plans that start from Business Pro and above. You'll also need to turn on the feature inside of your sending settings. So you want to make sure this box is ticked here. And you'll find it in the sending settings sections of your admin settings. The second thing you want to consider is that the allow to edit recipient action can only be assigned to an active user of the same DocuSign account. That means that you can't give the allow to edit recipient action to someone who is external to the account. And finally, if the recipient you're allowing to edit the envelope also needs to sign, you're going to need to add them twice inside of your workflow. So if that was the case, if the lawyer here also needed to sign the document, I would first make sure that you allow them to edit the document before they sign, because if they sign, they can't edit. So of course, you'll want to add them a second time. And here you can say that this is for the lawyer and they need to sign. Make sure that you'll put them in position two and then the client will become position three. So the lawyer reviews the document, they've allowed to edit action. The second recipient is that same lawyer, right? And they do have a needs to sign action because once they've edited the envelope, they can sign and then we have our clients signing. So that also means that the lawyer will be receiving two email invites from DocuSign, one to edit and approve and the second one to sign. In the next video, I want to explain how to use the specific recipient action, which is very useful useful in workflows when the sender of the document, maybe that's yourself, doesn't know the name and email of some of the recipients in the envelope. And again, if you'd like our help to get you unstuck with DocuSign today, just book a consultation with one of our specialists using the link down below. Our services include DocuSign training, template, database, and integration development to help you automate all your workflow. I will see you in the next video. Ciao!